Well, this doesn't suck. Just keg storage for me and you that we're gonna drink this afternoon. Okay, good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the happy hour, guys. My name is Jimmy Ludwig, and we are in Rochester, New York. This is High Falls. Rochester, New York is one of the few cities in this country built on a waterfall, and as you can see, this waterfall ain't no joke. Just over there, around this corner, is Genesee Brewing Company. Genesee Brewing Company has been here in Rochester since 1878. So we would be remiss as lovers of history and of beer if we did not stop in and have a look at this. Let's check it out. So you think you know Genesee Brewing, those huge brews, millions of barrels a year, Jenny Light, Jenny Beer, Jenny Cream Ale. Well, yeah, and think again. We're about to open something secret, but I see the word mosaic on the side of the crowler. <laughs> Look what he did there. You know, I'm blowing your mind. You ready for this? I'm ready. Are you sure? This is I'm what I'm calling a New York IPA. Oh, this is a dry hot, six and a half percent mosaic cream. Oh. Sir, if you would, your name and your position here. I'm Dean Jones, the head dishwasher janitor extraordinaire. That's a lie. Tell me the truth. No, I'm Gene Jones. I'm just the head brewer of the Pilot Brewery here at the Genesee Brew House in Rochester. Tell me a little bit about how you came to Genesee. You've, you've had quite the journey. Well, it's I've been brewing for 26 years. It is quite the journey, but it's a small, small community. So when they, they had this project, they called me and said, hey, we need an install. We need a guy to run the brewery. And I was supposed to train a brewer and kind of move on, but uh, <laughs> it's been five years. So here I am. We have the best view in Rochester, and it's one of the coolest breweries ever to work in. Genesee is known for, obviously, you are known for your powerhouse flagship brands. Genesee Cream Ale is the example of an American cream ale and won a gold at GABF back-to-back -back years. Is that right? Absolutely, yep. First beer I drank in my life. I was eight years old, grew up in Erie, Pennsylvania, <laughs> sipping my grandfather's big, heavy 16-ounce returnable bottle, and finally he slid one over to me and said, just drink your own, and I was like, cool. <laughs> Genesee has been an, an, an innovator from back in the day. Yeah, Cream yeah. ale, honey brown, beers that nobody ever thought of, of making before. So yeah. I like to say we're the USA's first craft brewery. We're also New York State's oldest brewery, been around here since 1878. Amazing. Really rich German brewing tradition roots, and uh, we try to stick to that and do what we do and do it well. And you are a very much a two-style brewer. That's what I've been told about you. Oh, so you heard I'm old school, right? Back in the day when I started this 26 years ago, there it was to style, right? There's some stuff that I'm really not to style on, but um, that's the fun stuff, you know? That'd be a salted caramel porter? A salted caramel chocolate porter, absolutely. <laughs> and here, a 20 barrel system that's making how many barrels a year? About a thousand. What the fun part is, is translating a 20 barrel brew to a thousand barrel brew. Have some recipes from here made it across the street. Absolutely, so what happened is, is anything that's in our pilot batch series that's in the bottle, because I don't see a bottling line around here, right? <laughs> so anything that is in that bottle has been produced next door. And these are beers that, that make people say, you know, can I swear? Holy <laughs> shit, that's from Genesee? It's right? It's the internet, you can swear, right? Pilot Brewery was a way to sort of let you guys play a little bit, let you stretch your legs, bring in some other flavors for people to try. Well, you know, Genesee really was like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, right? It was just a big, huge plan over there. Nobody could get in. You couldn't get in for a tour. You had to be the mayor or a senator or something. And, you know, we've got the brew system over there. It's on three different levels. It's over 13 acres. So you're exhausted when you had a tour anyway. And you yeah. got to have a hard hat and got to have glasses, which we're going to do later. And you know, it was really wasn't conducive to tours. It's not set up, it's a, it's a manufacturing plant. So when we had this opportunity here to install the, the Pilot Brewery and the restaurant here, it gave us a couple of opportunities. One, to get back in touch with our public. We added the museum, and so now people can walk through, look at the extensive history that we have as a brewery here in New York State, come back, look at the Pilot Brewery, and before, right, test batches were a thousand barrels. <laughs> Now they're 20, which is kind of more manageable. And, you know, we just walked through the Taste Flight Bar and it's packed on a Monday. And really, we're getting great feedback from R&D right here on the premises. Uh, and we're just having fun. I'm making beer that I like and just having a blast doing it. One thing is really cool, which I'm sure you haven't heard of, is we've got a small little barrel aging program. We're going to go taste out of the barrel. What? 
barrel aging. Oh god. Bourbon barrel aging. This is my favorite day ever. Don't cry. <laughs> As far as the eye can see. So this is their hop storage. We've been to microbreweries where the hop storage was a little teeny corner in the cold room. This is pa pallets and pallets of hops. Pallets and pallets and more pallets. That's a lot of hops. That's a lot of hops. My goodness. Uh, barrels. We've got about 44 uh, Woodford Reserve barrels. Uh, that half has our Scotch Ale in it. This half behind us has the winter warmer. I've never tasted the winter warmer. Do we get to taste it now? Hell yeah! <laughs> oh yeah! Label out! Label out! Look how nice and clear. Oh, in the last. Right. Put her a little pin in. Are you kidding me? Damn, that's good. <laughs> That may not have to stay in there a whole lot longer. No, it's uh, about ready to go. It's about ready to go. Wow. I mean, would you ever in your life expect this from Tennessee? Never. 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 And that's where you guys have an yeah. advantage. People that aren't looking for this from you, and you get to blow people away Absolutely. that way. And people, people remember us by age and up. These, these kids are, 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 are drinking cream ale again because it's cool and yes. exciting. Yes. And then they go, whoa, wait a minute. Bourbon barrel, winter warmer, holy cow. You guys just got a lot of publicity for something floating up the Erie Canal, which might just happen to be sitting right behind us. Absolutely. So, I mean, all these tanks you see actually did come down the Erie Canal using the Erie Canal, what it was meant for. Right? These are all from the huge fermentation tanks. Tank. 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 They were too big for the road. We had to bring them up the Erie Canal. 288 miles from Albany, New York to here. These guys had all these tanks in. We had 12 of them. They were in in four days. Wow. They were made for my beers, right? <laughs> they, they were made for beers that we could make on a smaller production scale instead of a thousand barrel batches. They could run through five or six of them. This is actually a scale down for us. So this is, wow. Yeah. Oh, God. A scale down. <laughs> yeah. Mind blown. That's crazy. And then this building over here to our right sure. is the new filter block, which is going to be all glassed in so you can watch all the filtration from the street. Much more of a show place for our stuff. And and as well, the, the this is a new filter room for the whole brewery. And it's all gonna be more efficient. Millions and millions of gallons of water, millions and millions of pounds of waste that went to the landfill. So this is really turning into our eco-brewery district, wow. which is gonna increase our efficiencies, be better for the environment, and be better for brewing in Rochester. I can't wait to come back and see what changes in this neighborhood happen when all this is up and running. That's gonna be really cool. You just wanna come back for a barrel aged winter warmer. Who are you kidding? That's true. <laughs> I honestly thought you guys were just adding tanks. I didn't realize it was such an intense modernization project that you have going on. Absolutely. Well, you know, we looked at the brewery and we decided that all these things needed to be upgraded. We've updated the brew house indoors as well, as well as the tanks outside. And that was a $40 million private investment by us. Directly out of our pocket, investment back in the Genesee Brewery. Yeah, and going right into the community of Rochester as well. Absolutely. I mean, there's about 400 guys working over there now and, and it's going up fast. They're building that building, installing the tanks as you saw, and I can't wait. It has been an absolute pleasure, man. You are a real treat. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah. Thanks so much. I hope you'll come back and be on the Happier Guys again at some point. Oh, you guys let me know when you have an opening, and I'll fill it in there. All right, man. Piece cool. of cake. Fun. I had right. a blast. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you next time. Thanks so much. Cheers. It's really, it's really fun. Brewers make great neighbors, period. Not only for the free beer. <laughs> <laughs>